Okay, so you kind of slipped maybe just a scope about an administration. Is this kind of... It feels like you're, you're doing the grassroots Iowa campaign, and I know you want to support her, but this feels like you're setting yourself up as well. I mean, what we have to remember is if we don't win in 2022, there is no 2024. And so we are here in Iowa because boy, the all grow strong here in Iowa. And you grow up top. And Mary Matt has been a fantastic congresswoman. She has fought for all the right things. She's back law enforcement. She's been tough on China. She's fighting the border. She's trying to help our families. She's cutting out wasteful spending. She's everything we believe in and more. And we wanted to get her encouragement and, and reinforcement since we supported her last time. We want to come back and support her again. And when I think being part of, being part of a former uh, administration uh, and being a governor, she has such a wealth of knowledge to bring to what's happening at the federal level and how spending at the federal level is increasing inflation, how cutting off uh, oil and gas is increasing gas prices. And that affects every single one of us every single day. What do you really expect to be the big challenges here? And, and how does maybe what happened with the Supreme Court last week? You know, I think people are going to cope with their pocket pay. I mean, when you're paying, you know, people know 18 months ago they were paying under $2 a gallon for gas here in Iowa. And now it's over $4. And it's going to go up again. We know that food prices are going to continue to go up over, over the summer. They're concerned about what's happening at the border because, as Ambassador Haley said, every state is a border state. They're concerned about drug overdose, suicide. They're concerned about learning and how, how far back our kids have been because of, number one, what's being taught in our schools, and number two, schools being closed to the pandemic. And what our state in Iowa has been able to show by opening schools. And you know, I can tell you, we're crossing the country helping candidates, and the number one issue we hear from families is that it costs more to get gas, and that's how they get to work. It costs more to go to the grocery store, and that's how they feed their families. They're worried about the crime on the streets. They're worried about the uncontrolled border. And they're worried about the education that their children lost during COVID. They don't have the luxury of politics. They want people in office that are going to fight for them and get things done. And that's why they're in that place. So you don't worry too much about the other side sort of trying to pull voters in and saying, you've got to do something about that. You know, two weeks ago. You know, I think. We, know, we knew what uh, the uh, Dobbs ruling was going to be. We already had that. You know, we're for life. We support families. We support mothers. We're looking at ways to continue to make contraception affordable, looking at ways to support quality maternal health care, looking at ways to increase access and information about adoption. We support mothers. We're looking at ways. She did it as a state senator. She also did it as a uh, UN ambassador. Looking at ways that we can change the child care plan and that people don't lose benefits if they want to increase their education, work more hours, or get a higher paying job. So we're supporting families every step along the way. And no doubt this is a personal issue. It's a personal issue for everyone. But what happened was a great thing for people to hear the power of their voice because we don't want unelected Supreme Court justices deciding something this important. We want it decided at the state level where people can have their voices heard with their elected officials. And now we're going to see every state's voice heard on this issue, and that's where it should be. All right, guys, one more. So um, what is your reaction to the January 6th committee hearing testimony? yesterday from the former aide, you saying that President Trump was um, wanting to go to the Capitol. So I didn't see it. Um, we were in Wisconsin yesterday supporting Rebecca Claybush for governor and Ron Johnson for Senate, so I did not see it. I know that it was another committee hearing. What I will continue to say is the problem with that committee is if they strongly believed in what they had, they should have allowed Republicans to be on that committee. They should have allowed countering voices to come and question what was being said, and they haven't done that. And so that's well, what's being... Representative we... McCarthy sort of poo-poo that a little bit? I don't know. I, don't know. I, I mean, the Speaker Pelosi would not allow the minority leader's uh, choices to be on that committee. First time, broken president, it was historical that the minority party was given no rights. And so when you have a, a committee that doesn't have Republican voices, isn't there, that there is no countering narrative, it's not like this is a court of law and there's a cross-examination. There's one point of view by the majority party, which is the point of view that they want to have. Do you think that, do you think...